So today is April 15th, uh, 2020, <clears throat> and the topic is immune system and how it's related to the bowels. I kind of just wanted to check in a little bit first. Um, we started uh, these Facebook Lives, I think, very soon after we had to go into quarantine for the office. Um, very shortly after, I think most businesses were required to do it. So I just wanted to check in, Is, how's everyone doing? We can, you know, do a little Q&A first and then I can get into the bowels too. Um, just post down below, let me know how's the quarantine. We're about, I think, a month in for most people or maybe five weeks for some. Um, how's everyone doing? How's everyone at home? How's uh, anxiety? How's fear state? Jatinder says she's good. Um, what does that mean? How are you settling into just... Uh, some people really enjoy it because um, irregardless of um, uh, businesses and all that, they are more inclined to be homebodies and this suits them really, really well. So um, I've heard that from a lot of people. Um, Jatinder says she's good. Anyone else have any comments? So Candy's watching. Hi Candy, welcome. Um, Candy's on our amazing marketing team, which is how we are able to get these Facebook Lives out to everyone, um, is by, by our marketing team. So she's part of the huge team that helps us. Uh, let's just check in if anyone else had questions. So Jatinder says living in the moment, hoping that this is um all for the good and we come out a better world yeah that's really beautiful um i think we can't come out the same as how we went in so the hope is that we come out for the better as a collective as a humanity um this really does feel like a huge reset for uh our environment for how people really live and I think we got caught into the hamster wheel of what we think we're supposed to live uh, like you know just the, the work rush the dropping off rush the going here rush the sports there rush and I'm all for of course bettering yourself and um, your kids and, and expanding their horizons and what they should be doing and playing and instruments and all that but there was a lot of um, go 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 rush that we just got looped into and then during the quarantine it was like snapped and all of a sudden we had to like sit and so I really feel like this is a big big reset and then hopefully going forward um, we can include everyday activities in again but hopefully perhaps just the ones that are needed and required and maybe you can reflect back and think like you know some of these things weren't really necessary in my life at that point um but we just got kind of caught into doing it and keeping up with whatever was supposed to be normal or not normal um because traditional cultures like i mentioned in one of my facebook lives there was a wasn't a lot of travel there was a lot of sitting and um connecting with family and um even i think i mentioned when i went to learn surfing in hawaii i, th I can't remember the year it must have been like 20 years ago 15 years ago something like that and um so our, one of our surf instructors, he was around our age, and we asked him for a restaurant. It was maybe closer to the airport, which is probably half an hour away from where we were in Maui. And um, he didn't know where the place was, not the specific restaurant. He didn't know the little town. And he's just like, this is my high school right here. And this is the surf school, and this is where I grew up, and this is where I am. And he had never really driven to that little market area or that little city. And it was just like, that's where you live. And that was Maui, and maybe like 15 years ago, you know? Um, and in traditional cultures, you just, you don't travel and run around all the time. And there's there is a lot of like, retracting of that and just sitting and connecting with the family and of course there's work and um, careers and all that but this this is very similar to how it used to used to be um so maybe there's going to be a happy medium to tinder you know as we move forward um and what comes out of this so it definitely will not be the same world i i, I firmly believe that 
what it's going to look like. I don't know. But I also firmly believe that we can create our reality. So what do we want it to look like? Do we want it to look like the rush, 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 go, go, go? Um, do you want it to look like I'm accepting of myself as an introvert? You know, a lot of introverts feel really, really guilty. I think just, you know, you mentioned that too, that people with anxiety are actually feeling much better during the quarantine. I think people who are introverted, sometimes it might come out as anxiety and they're being forced into an extrovert world, which it seems like everyone who's successful, you have to be an extrovert. And that's actually not true at all. Um, there's a really good TED talk on that, by the way, by it's called The Think Quiet Storm by Susan Cain. And it's about introverts and how everyone thinks that extroverts run the world. So um, that's a good one. I like that one a lot. Um, before we get started about bowels, I just wanted to kind of like use that topic to tie in a, a variety of topics. It's a biggie, and um, but I'm open to other questions too because um, this bowel issue is really just a common theme to, through everyone's Facebook Live. It's just a non-negotiable to have daily, regular, well-formed bowel movements. Um, so. I'm open to other questions too, and then I can, you know, loop in the bowel talk throughout the rest of the talk. So before we get started um, connecting the bowel movements and the immune system, I have a new Netflix movie and I watched it and it did bring up stuff for me and um, I can't wait to share because it's not necessarily sometimes a message in the movie, but it's like the other chatter. Um, so I'm excited to share what it brought up for me. It's part of my old uh, people pleasy tendencies. Um, <clears throat> it brought that up big time. So it's called 100 Days of Solitude. <clears throat> and I believe that I'm scheduled to do that for uh, April 22nd. So Mike just is watching. Hi, Mike. So I believe um, it is April 22nd. So whoever has Netflix, uh, please for our next homework, watch 100 Days of Solitude and make notes of three points that you took away from the movie and how to integrate it into your daily life during quarantine and post quarantine moving forward. How can you integrate it? Um, it was very powerful movie and it was also powerful in a way that I didn't expect it to be because of my old stories playing as I watched it. So sometimes it's the lessons in the movie, yes, but sometimes it's the other chatter um, as you watch the movie too. I'll explain after. Um, <clears throat> and then I'm working on another surprise. Um, hopefully it'll work. We're just trying to figure out how to do interview style for, um, so Candy, um, Terry Ann is gonna help me with this, but um, I wanna interview one of my best friends for, um, one of our Facebook Lives, I believe it's gonna be April 30th. So stay tuned for that. He has a show on Netflix, so I'll give you a heads up um, when it's confirmed, everything is confirmed, but that's gonna be a fun one. Um, yeah, he's really a master at surrendering, so this is really what we're being asked to do during this time of quarantine, and, and I think it would be just a, a great uh, vibe talk to have him on. So, Having said that, let's get into bowel movements. Um, this is like one of my favorite topics, um, one of people's favorite topics. I remember when I first, first, first started at my first clinic in uh, Yale Town when I first graduated. Um, it was an amazing clinic and uh, the whole team was amazing. The front receptionist was incredible. And um, she's such a, just a open heart and calm personality that literally, uh, this happens often and she was totally confidential about it but it happens in naturopathic offices that when people call they would tell her their entire health history and then she was just like okay so we're just gonna book you in because she didn't need to know their health history to book them in she was just trying to book them in and then they would always talk about their bowel movements with her always 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 so um people love talking about their bowel movements when i worked at um before it was whole foods it was capers and i worked on the capers um on robson and uh denman i think um so it was capers when I worked in the um, natural food section that people always talk to me about their bowels who always, always. So I actually, when I was working at Sage, um, when the receptionist and I would laugh that um, people would just share like right off the bat by calling um, their bowel issues. Um, I wanted to write a book called I'd like to buy a bowel please. And so maybe I will one day. Um, but as a play off of uh, Wheel of Fortune, um, I'd like to buy a bowel with Vanna White. Okay, bowel movements. So, um, 
bowel movements, there are four emunctories in our system. So emunctories are roots of elimination. We are exposed to hundreds and hundreds upon hundreds of toxins every day. I read a study just recently, and I've heard this before, and um, I was just prompted to look it up again, that there's over 200 to 300 um, home chemicals, like in home cleaners and stuff like phthalates and all that, BPA, in the cord blood of infants, so just born. So um, Sippy says hi, so welcome Sippy. So, you know, there's so many toxins that is in the baby's bloodstream just from being birth. Um, from when I was in school, there's toxins even in the breast milk. So there, we're just inundated with toxins. So we basically have to, if you think of a bucket, we have to eliminate faster than they come in. And so we need very, very, very efficient emunctories. So what are emunctories? Emunctories are roots of elimination. We eliminate through our bowels, so bowel movements, urination, perspiration, so sweating, uh, working out, walking, whatever it is, um, and breath is another emunctory that we have. So the efficiency of our breath is an emunctory. Um, we release a ton of toxins when we're breathing. We release a ton of toxins when we're sleeping just via the breath. So all of these have to be efficient in order to eliminate everything that comes into our system. We are exposed to, um, I think it's millions or billions of viruses, billions. You know, when it, they're saying that there's a current virus going on, we are exp exposed daily, daily to uh, an army of viruses. We, throughout our life, have been exposed to uh, millions and billions of bacteria, trillions of bacteria. Um, we have an immune system to that is when treated and uh, focused on, which we focus on an element of focusing on your immune system in all of these Facebook lives, um, it is well primed to handle the external world. And we have to, in order to uh, have a highly functioning immune system, is to have efficient emunctories. So when stuff gets trapped in our bodies and can't get eliminated, that's when we get in trouble. That's when the body has to use secondary emunctories or um, secondary roots of elimination which are not effective as symptoms to get things out. So a secondary emunctory could be asthma. So you're trying to get out uh, all these toxins as the, uh, in the form of phlegm. Chronic sinus infections, again, in the form of mucus, trying to get these out. Very common for women to have chronic yeast infections. Their emunctories are not efficient. So the, the toxins have to be removed from the body. Um, if those four, the main ones, the breath, perspiration, bowel movements, and lungs, or yeah, uh, breath, perspiration, urine, and bowel movements are not efficient, there will be secondary roots of elimination. There'll be uh, lymph nodes swollen, you know? Um, we'll get sick often, because we just can't get stuff out. So a daily bowel movement is absolutely, at minimum, essential. In fact, the definition of constipation is anything less than three bowel movements per day. We are actually supposed to be like um, animals, like dogs often will have a meal and then have a bowel movement right after. That is a highly tuned, rhythmic, uh, tapped in, um, highly primed bowel, is, is to have one bowel movement post meal. But I've rarely, rarely seen that, and at least daily, it should be one bowel movement daily. Well formed, easy to pass. It should be long-ish, like a banana. Um, it should be a darker brown color. Um, there should not be any mucus. There should not be any blood. There should not be undigested food, um, unless it's like, you know, corn or a little, um, like, uh, cellulose from tomatoes, things like that, you know, a little bit of the skin, that's okay, a little bit of the skin of like peppers, red peppers, things like that, that we just really can't digest. Um, but there shouldn't be like uh, chunks of seeds, there shouldn't be uh, undigested apple, there shouldn't be uh, undigested spinach or lettuce. That is not part of a healthy bowel movement. That means there's an issue in the digestion somewhere where food is not really being broken down um, as efficiently. 
that links to one of my previous um, Facebook lives about low stomach acid and when there is perhaps uh, low stomach acid and acid suppressing meds, the stomach or the gut pancreas doesn't uh, release digestive enzymes and there's an inefficiency of uh, digestion. So it could be, it's a whole symphony of events that's off track if there's undigested food in the bowels. So that it really shouldn't be malodorous, you know, of course every bowel has to have some odor, but it shouldn't be like wretched um, bowel movements and gas and flatulence. Um, that is something that is off in the gut. So when we are having a bowel movement, it should be it, the bowel, if your body is really, really primed and tuned in, that actually is what wakes us in the morning. So from, I believe it is uh, 5 a.m. to 7 a.m., there our body, in Chinese medicine, traditional Chinese medicine, the body uh, has different organ system clocks. And for 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. is a large intestine. So what really should wake us up is just the um, the light from the sun rising, um, our natural circadian rhythm of the cortisol rising in the morning, um, and also bowels. So what sh the bowels are being ready to release. You may not feel it right in bed, but as you get up, um, there should be an urge for a bowel movement. That's ideal, ideal. So not many have that, but that is ideal. At least first thing in the morning or after some water, many people have to have a little bit of caffeine to stimulate the bowels, but there should be a bowel movement every morning, well-formed, actually long, not undigested food, no mucus, no bleeding, no blood on the toilet paper, no blood in the toilet water. Um, and there shouldn't need to be, um, whether they're a laxative that is natural or um, a pharmaceutical, there really shouldn't need to be one of those um, for a healthy bowel. It should, you should just wake up. So when you're uh, moving your bowels, you're eliminating toxins, you're eliminating toxic waste. So the bowels um, are waste products from food, they're sloughed off uh, bacteria, pathogens, and our good bacteria also turns over. And I think it's like, I can't recall, don't quote me, but um, like a third of our bowel um, volume is from sloughed off bacteria. They're sloughed off um, waste products, you know, um, all mixed in there too, but there's a lot of our own sloughing over bacteria, um, the good bacteria, the good flora. And so to, to move the bowels, it means that the waste products are not being overly fermented in the gut and causing a toxic release of gas, um, putrefaction, um, and then there's the, the waste that's not being eliminated and then you have more waste coming in and then that waste is still there and it's not moving and then that waste creates more toxins from just not moving and you have a very toxic system. So there's going to be ramifications of a breakdown of an immune system, breakdown of secondary emunctories. It could even a secondary emunctory could be like racing thoughts, you know, um, not being able to sleep, bad breath. Breath is a big one, skin issues, eczema, all of that is linked to inefficient emunctories. Does that make sense to everyone that the bowel, in order to keep everything healthy, um, has to move daily? 80% of our immune system is in our gut, and if we are not moving and eliminating what it's clearing out and helping to protect us from, there is major, major problems. So there has to be a bowel movement every single day. What are some easy ways um, to help this? So while in quarantine, this could be an issue because um, there's maybe not a schedule. So we talked about this early, early on, right when we started to do the Facebook Lives when everyone went into self-quarantine, but starting a routine. So keeping a routine really helps your bowels instead of having like a chaotic schedule. Try to have meals at set times three times a day, plus your snacks. Wake times, try to have them the same. Sleep time, try to have it the same. 
Um, even when you try to exercise, try to have it the same. Um, the amounts of water you have, try to have it the same every single day. Um, but routine is a very, very helpful way to help the bowels. The bowels are very connected to the mind. And so when the mind gets into that contracted loop, um, whether it's watching the news too much, um, in that fear state, now there, we're five weeks in, there might be another wave of the financial kind of um, thinking of what's going on and repercussions of this. Um, when that mind gets really, really uh, fastidious and hypervigilant and just overthinking and in that thinking loop, it really, really affects the bowels. Um, so one of the ways to try to offset the mind is to have a routine. So every day having a routine, non-negotiable, try to stick to it. You know, you're not being like super, super uh, crazy about it and, and super upset if you're off routine, but you're just trying to implement some semblance of a routine. Um, the bowels also, you have to think about hydration. So there's a lot of... Um, let me go for a supplement, let me go for this, when often one of the most overlooked is um, hydration. So having an adequate amount of water per day, and it should be, if you can, if you have it at home, um, a filtered water um, and drinking, what they say a rule of thumb is, and it's different for everyone, but half your body weight in ounces. So let's say if you're uh, 100 pounds, which probably none of us on this talk are, but let's just say 100 pounds, um, that's 50 ounces of water per day. So that's like the rough rule. Um, if you're a 200 pound man, that would be 100 ounces of water per day as your rough kind of benchmark to aim towards. And now that could be too much for some people and some people just drink more. So you really have to follow your body and if you feel sick with too much water, it's, it's not being absorbed properly, it's too much for you. So really follow your body, but chances are um, you might need a little bit more if your bowels are a little bit um, backed up. And by a little bit, meaning it has to be daily for it to not be defined as constipation, it has to be daily well-formed, easy to pass. Um, there's another thing to the water too, is sometimes we don't absorb the water because historically what we used to drink is like well water um, and well water has a lot of minerals in it. So we used to get a lot of minerals from our water naturally occurring, which is extremely healthy for us and the earth was a lot healthier back then too, um, not as toxic, not as toxic um, dumping into our water systems, but minerals naturally occurring from well water allows for cellular hydration. So when you're drinking water, you can be drinking it, but you're not absorbing it at a cellular level. So you're drinking it and literally you're just like peeing it all out and it's not being absorbed. So when there's minerals in the water, you actually absorb the water at a cellular level. So it has to be the right minerals, the right amount, and um, then that is is actually absorbed. And we know this to be true, and they try to mimic it um, and make us pay super high amounts of uh, money for it um, with corporations, but like um, sports drinks. They have electrolytes in the sports drink, but then they have like a crap ton of sugar too, but they're trying to mimic the electrolytes, the minerals, uh, to mimic that cellular hydration. So you need minerals for the water to actually enter the cells. And um, you can buy powdered electrolytes too, put that in your water and eliminate this, those name brand electrolyte drinks, um, which I won't say, but they're usually like blue or orange, which how that can seem like a good idea I just don't understand however if you're doing like ultra marathons and stuff like that go for it I think you need it but on an average person who's not doing that those green and blue drinks are just absolutely not necessary uh, even if you're doing hot yoga they're absolutely not necessary so you could some people are still trying to mimic this and they're putting um, electrolytes in their water purchasing electrolytes that is a good option too um, so 
Sandeep just joined us. Hi, Sandeep. Um, that is a good option too. And when you buy filtered water, especially uh, reverse osmosis, um, I think Dasani used to be reverse osmosis, but now they have stated on the label remineralized because uh, you, when you do reverse osmosis, you're stripping all the water and it was very, very detrimental to um, kidneys. And I believe there are studies done on uh, rats that were only given um, reverse osmosis and it was, they were dying of kidney failure because we need those minerals to actually absorb the water. So reverse osmosis is a way to filter the water, but it was very hard on our kidneys. So then they started to remineralize the water. So I think Dasani, when you read it, it says reverse osmosis and remineralize. So you need minerals in the water. Um, that might be part of the dehydration for um, constipation is that you're not cellularly absorbing it. A way around that is to have your normal water. So let's say you're having um, two liters a day, in one of those liters, you fill it up for the day, you fill up your first container. You can put, uh, so you have to buy high, high quality Celtic sea salt or uh, Himalayan sea salt, and it's a high, high quality, not the one that's found at box chain stores. I don't think that all of those pink salts are really, truly uh, high quality salts. Um, I've heard that there's a lot of like plastic molecules and things like that. Really you get what you pay for and a high, high quality salt is quite expensive and um, yeah, so I'll just say that. You get what you pay for. So you can put like a eighth of a teaspoon into your liter of water and um, salt has over 80 minerals that we can cellularly absorb. So when you're putting that wa uh, salt in your water, this is not for everyone, but some people need the minerals if they're cellularly dehydrated. When you um, drink that water there and out, you're probably enhancing the water absorption at a cellular level, and therefore the bowels will actually be um, hydrated and there will be a difference in the constipation. So cellular hydration is a big one. It may not be for everyone that is just, just water, it's cellular hydration. I know I keep saying that, but it's a big difference. So salt can play the, the different factor in that. And you, many patients will find that they drink the water and they actually don't feel thirsty after because they're actually absorbing it so minerals make a huge difference i am more of a fan of mineral i don't love supplementing but i'm more of a fan of um intracellular minerals versus a uh, big dose of vitamins Hopefully vitamins, we can heal a person's gut and they can absorb most of it from their food source, but minerals is really, really the key to um, amazing health and an amazingly vibrant immune system and um, a cellular a health at a cellular, cellular level and the hydrated cell. So people will report they're actually not dehydrated in the mouth, um, the bowels are moving better, they need maybe less water and they feel actually quite hydrated. Um, and I think an old Ayurvedic uh, treatment is also to have salt for constipation too. So they knew as well that it was the, the minerals in the uh, salt that really helps with the cellular hydration. And um, a lot of traditional cultures, um, they didn't have those big orange or pink drinks um, when they're living you know, in a traditional culture. But what they would have is a mixture of like lemon and water and salt and pepper, and they're creating uh, their own electrolyte drink. So that would help in the hot, hot, hot heat to not get extremely dehydrated and allow for cellular hydration. So traditional cultures knew this and we just get off a little bit and now it's so confusing, of course, with what water we should drink. Um, is it filtered? Is it spring? Is it that? Is it this? And reverse osmosis and then you have to add minerals after it. Um, but note that just try to get a filtered water, um, get at least the chlorine out. Um, Vancouver is not too, too bad um, for water. Um, but at least get the chlorine out and then it, it, with your filter and then add a little bit of salt to your water if you need to. Does that make sense for everyone? So cellular hydration routine. That makes sense. Thumbs up everyone. Good. Um, 
Also, um, I keep talking about the, yeah, so there's some thumbs up, makes sense. So I keep talking about this, but castor oil packs. So um, a lot of people want to take a supplement in place of uh, doing something because it's quicker. But when we're talking about health, we're talking about being a master of your health. And there's nothing for me that can override a castor oil pack and its effectiveness. And it costs cents a day, literally cents a day. So what you do, um, you can email the clinic if you want a handout on this, um, but I've talked about it many, many times, and I think it's in even some of the past videos. But you get a piece of unbleached cotton flannel, fold it into, um, does boiling tap water help it for consumption? Yes, yes, that's a great question. I was gonna mention that too. Yes, you can boil it, um, and then you can consume that. I believe you could even leave it on the counter overnight too, covered, and then a lot of the chlorine will evaporate off too. Don't quote me on that directly, but boiling, yes. And then if you still need to, you can add a, like, a, like I'm talking like an eighth of a teaspoon to a liter of salt. Um, yeah, so you can do that, that's a great question. And so castor oil packs, oh, I talked about it in the lymph talk, so it's there. So if you wanna <clears throat> re-watch me like, do the actual pack, um, but it's my number one treatment for bowel movements is also water and also um, the castor oil pack. So you get a piece of cotton flannel unbleached, fold it in two, you have to purchase high quality castor oil. It should be hexane free, so it can't be just an average store-bought brand in those little um, brown bottles. Those are just for um, joint pain and stuff like that. Uh, it should be hexane free because you're absorbing it through your digestive system, through the skin, um, and you're, it's being absorbed through the lymph nodes. And what the property of castor oil is, is to stimulate peristalsis. And um, peristalsis helps the gut wave and it stimulates the movement of the bowels again. And in the morning, so you do it at night, in the morning um, there should be an ease with the bowel movements because it stimulates that. Some moms will even attest to this because uh, they are given castor oil to drink um, to stimulate labor because it can stimulate the contractions of the uterus as well. And also traditional cultures, again, used to give uh, orally, they used to give castor oil to kids, I think once a month to get out um, uh, viruses, toxins, worms, bacteria, and but it would result when you take it orally as diarrhea for them. So when you do a castor oil pack, it's gentle. It has that peristalsis effect, but you're not going to have diarrhea unless you're very toxic. Then you just have to do a, a short amount of time for the castor oil packs. So that's number three. I really <clears throat> am a huge, huge fan of castor oil packs if there's constipation. There's nothing easier, guys. Like, you can't get around health. There's no magic bullet cure. It's a layering of different processes every day that we need to um, keep in our, our, our lives. And not just to do when we need it. Like, um, you know, I, I gotta take care of my immune system in November and December. No, I'm taking care of my cold flu season in January, February, August. Every single day, I'm worrying about my immune system. Can you get any of these essential minerals from certain teas? That's a good question too. Yes, you can get minerals from teas for sure. Uh, dandelion root has a lot of minerals in it, so you can purchase dandelion root tea, which also really good for constipation. It stimulates the liver. And I believe stinging nettles are really, really good. They have a lot of minerals and sticky, stinging nettles too, so you can buy those dry and just boil those. This is a great question. So yeah, you can boil those. Um, and then strain those and then drink that as your wa water as well. You can get minerals from that. But the root of dandelion has more minerals and stinging nettles have minerals. There must be others. I'm not huge, uh, hugely knowledgeable about a lot of teas. I believe hibiscus is really good too. Um, but specifically, um, the, um, the dandelion will help with the bowels but also give you minerals too. So I know medicinal teas, you can buy it at London Drugs, you can buy it at Shoppers. It's called medicinal teas. They're kind of expensive or just look for them to be on sale. They're sometimes six, seven dollars a box, but uh, often London Drugs, I find it's the best. They'll have it on sale for like $3.99. Um, me and Dr. Karen will go in and just like, grab a ton when we see that happening. Um, a good price, we'll tell each other. So keep an eye out for medicinal herbal teas. Um, you can find them.
Savon, London Drugs. Um, yes, so, um, what was I talking about? Uh, the castor oil pack and um, not a huge fan of the supplements usually you know if we can get around it but uh, there are a few things that you can do if the bulk of the bowel is an issue and you need that mucilaginous kind of um, Karen, yeah, so Karen writes, I love dandelion root tea. Yeah, like we love it. It's so good. Um, yeah, you can get them on Amazon. Jatinder says too. You can get them at Whole Foods. You can get them at uh, Choices. Um, but Lennon Drows, that price is good when they're on sale. They're coming in hot, Lennon Drows, with their their health food items. They're like totally kicking up their health food item game. That aisle is like impressive. Anyways, okay, so supplements I'm not a huge fan of, uh, if we can avoid it, because you have to do the work. Oh yeah, health is a layering of like um, of different tasks every single day to keep your immune system revved up and high. It's not just something we do when a pandemic hits. It's something you do every day. And our patients, you know, I I'm so in awe of them because they're doing the work every single day. You're protected, we're protected. We have like a, a, a immune system built in high and we're trying to enhance it by using the law of how the body works and we're trying to enhance it. So a few things you can add into your diet if you know bulk is an is issue. A lot of times again in Ayurvedic medicine, when the body is really dry, like you have a tendency for dry skin, dry hair, um, just dry overall, mouth is always dry, you may need more oils in your diet and high quality oils. So you could add in a high, so that means dry bowels too, like you know, constipation, it's just too much dryness in the body. So think about adding maybe more clarified butter to your foods, um, more good fats like avocado, maybe egg yolk, um, uh, cod liver oil, um, maybe even just fattier cuts of meat if you can handle it and if you're more plant-based add more high quality oils like coconut oil um, virgin coconut oil um, if you're vegetarian and still have butter that's my absolute favorite is the butter clarified butter so just drizzle that on more veggies and things like that and maybe if you're too dry already like don't dry roast veggies steam them instead so you're thinking you don't want to add dry upon dry don't have a dry cereal have oatmeal because you know there's more water have more like rice congee versus like a puffed rice which is like super dry so you have to look at your body as an individual if you're dry dry or bowels are dry don't eat dry foods eat more moisture causing foods and so oils really help to lubricate the bowels too and then you can do chia seeds too so chia seeds i found are really really good for helping to move the bowels because they're mucilaginous and so what you can do is like make up a chia pudding and have that every morning an easy recipe is like a quarter of a cup of chia it goes a long way and then you put it in like a can of coconut milk and then you can add some cacao powder or something like that so and then let it sit overnight the chia seeds or even 20 minutes you can let it sit the chia seeds will absorb that coconut milk and um then it puffs up and it's really mucilaginous and that uh, really can help the bowels Flax seeds too, uh, if a person can handle it, can also help the bowels. But flax as a property is a lot hotter too. So if you're already dry and constipated, your body is dry and hot, um, it, the flax might make it worse. So just play around with that. I find chia is a little bit more neutral. Um, you need a good probiotic. Obviously that is like non-negotiable. You can add probiotic definitely as a supplement because it helps that good bacteria, helps to get the um, the waste out of the body, you know, you don't want to sit with this putrefied um, waste in your bowels uh, becoming even more and more, you know, toxic as the days go by. Um, I like aloe, so you can get whole leaf aloe juice too. You can purchase that again online right now if you can't find it, but a lot of stores, I believe even Savon has it, but it should be whole leaf. And you can take like an ounce um, in the morning, an ounce at night. That really helps to soothe the bowels too. So those are really good as a food source. Chia is really good. Water is really good. Oils are really good. So those are all really good. And then you can't bypass the nervous system. Um, I always have to throw in a mental, emotional component. 
Uh, yeah, flax for fiber makes your constipation worse. That happens to a lot of people. Flax um, can make their constipation worse because it is hot. The property of flax is very hot. So just be careful. Maybe chia is better for you and maybe you don't need it. Maybe maybe just uh, water is enough. Um, but the property of bowels, if you can't have a bowel movement, um, which totally enhances your immune system, 80% of your immune systems in your gut, we gotta move the bowels. Um, if you can't have a bowel movement, look at the symbol of it, you're not letting it go. There's something ruminating and also your predisposition likely is not being able to let go so whether it's control inner control fear um having things your way having um, a story in your point of view has to be your way um this is how it happened and you're just so steadfast like attached to the story being that way um there's a not letting go as an undercurrent in your um in your kind of ch chatter your state that um could be heightened right now too with the pandemic and if that's like just you know in this slowing down is really being brought to the surface is the not letting go so often there's a real kind of type a element Elements in the personality when there's a bowel issue um, and it's just like there's a not letting go so that's a mental emotional thing especially when there's stress and then boom like no more bowel movements um, that's a big one finally of course like in the pandemic we are not moving as much you gotta move so bowels are again part of the lymph they need pumping they need stimulation so try at least to go for a walk once a day um, if you're able to and your your joints are well like do something like jumping jacks or have like a dance party in the living room with your kids do something that's like just movement um but you got to move every single day and also the element i'll go back to it but the element of not letting go in the nervous system that's big um one supplement you could do to help the nervous system is um um magnesium that might help the nervous system relax a little bit so you could do that do you have any feedback on bidets i love the idea of bidets um i have yet to get one but that is on my to-do list and i'm a huge huge fan of it um growing up indian you just had like a little like um can beside the toilet and you would use water to wash yourself while you clean um because to just use dry paper is really not good for the bowels. Um, it's really not as hygienic and it's not healthy for us. So huge fan of bidets, yes. Um, I'm actually gonna try to get one called Tushy. Um, I haven't got it yet, um, but that's on my to-do list too. So yes, and if there's a not letting go, Sandra just joined, hi Sandra. Um, if there's a not letting go, try to, um, you have to do something to work on the nervous system. This is hard to do on your own, but it would be journaling meditating, um, catching yourself when you spin out of like, it has to be my way. Uh, I can't let go of the fact that it's somebody else's like taking over all that stuff. You know, we got to catch those patterns and it's not being passive. It's just, a, there's another way out of our set control and not, and not allowing the freedom of it being another way that when that's wrapped up in the body or I have to take over everything. It's just, it has to be done my way. There's a not letting go too or even like you remember like for 20 30 years of issues of people said to you or what they said to you um that's a not letting go so you know there could be an issue with um bowels uh there's so much more i can say sleep it's connected to sleep the sleep and the gut brain connection is identical when there's bowel issues there's usually sleep issues so those are a few good things to get you on track um i hope that helps um, if you felt that this was helpful, um, please share um, with your friends. We're just here still being of service as much as we can um, from the Brio team. Everyone is just stepping up big time. Um, Dr. Vanessa just created something uh, fun that will link in um, our Facebook Lives and hopefully we'll get that sent out too via our newsletters. So keep an eye out for that. And that's it really for me. If there's any last questions you can ask, but remember our homework for April 22nd is the Netflix um, movie documentary, 100 Days of Solitude. And um, yeah, I won't tell you anything about it, but just think about it. 
in terms of our quarantine and um, three lessons you could learn and what you could take away and integrate into the real world. Uh, we're doing this again because last time we did um, the Chef's Table series, season three, uh, episode one with Jean Kwan, and that was really fun, Facebook Live. So we're doing another movie. Um, any other questions before I sign off for today? I forgot I do have another patient, so I should get ready for that. Um, any last questions? Feedback on bidets. All right, everyone, thank you for joining. Thanks to Tinder, yeah, thank you everyone. So that was really fun. Um, bowel health is utmost, so among trees, we gotta keep our among trees clear, get that bucket, moving out toxins more quicker than they come in. When they don't get moved out, they spill into other tissues. So Lynn says, thank you, Dr. Nitu. Uh, you're so welcome, it's so my pleasure. So thank you, you guys. And that was great, Sippy says, uh, you're so welcome. Very, very welcome. Thank you for tuning in. It's really, it's super fun So to connect with all of you guys. All right, thank you everyone. I am going to get ready for my next patient and I will chat with you guys next week. Have a good weekend.